What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. This is part two of the uh, pre-SVS uh, strategy. Um, if you have not seen the Sunday uh, part of this, definitely uh, take a quick pause and check that out so this all makes a little bit more sense to you. But it is Tuesday, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, actually 8 p.m. Eastern hit. So it opened up the SVS chat um, along with the uh, the server war scoreboard so we can see the general rankings and the monarch power and the alliance situation. So. Um, if you don't have spies that go over there early on uh, to check out what's going on, now you can see uh, you can see your opponent. So in the last video, I showed you how I kind of switched my generals around, so it kind of you know hides what I got going on. So it, it did update, of course, Sunday night, and I've kept it like this um, for the most part because there's been no battlefields or whatnot. But uh, just to show you what it looks like, based off switching gear around, now I only have. Roland at 3.7 at number six, and I've got Zachary Taylor at number 12. So they don't know any of the PvP generals that I have. And I hope you guys appreciate this because one day somebody's going to see these videos that I'm going to be matched with and they're going to know what I'm doing. So hope you guys appreciate this. <laughs> but uh, hopefully that doesn't happen, right? So uh, my generals are hidden, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. But uh, what I wanted to do on this video is do like a quick analysis of what I look at, you know, with the, the server that we're competing against to see what they have going on. So if I go to Event Center and I go to Server War, obviously we've got a, a blank scoreboard, right? You go to Ranking of an Enemy Server, and this is where you can see all the stats for the, the generals, uh, their monarch power, the alliance power ranking. And there's a few things that I like to take a look for, um, you know, who the biggest threats are, who the biggest alliance is, um, and just know who the biggest players are. If you do happen to put a spy uh, on their server, like Sunday night or even Monday, you will be able to see that server's previous SVS. So you're going to know, like, who their top five or top ten was. You're going to see how many points that they put up, how many negative points, which can really give you an idea of somebody's skill set, you know, how active they are in participation, uh, which is really important too. But let's go ahead and uh, let's let's check out their uh, their monarch power ranking, right? So they got a, a 465 mil, a 277 mil, 266, uh, and down the road. So I'm 1.1 billion. Our second is 600. And then we've got some some high 300s and and quite a few 200s. So looking at this, I'm not too I'm not too worried, right? That doesn't mean that you can't lose. Um, we've lost two SVSs total uh, since our server's creation uh, six months ago. One of them was against an opponent that was pretty similar match to this. They were just really smart players. They knew how to ghost. So don't let this power, you know, fool you, even if you got some really big players on your server, because you have to actually be able to attack them. They have to give any server has to give away those points for you to take, right? Um, but based off looking at this, I'm not really too worried about them coming to our server and taking our throne because it's based off of what we have, we'd be able to kick them out. They're just they're just not big enough. Um so looks pretty good, but I'll be keeping a lookout. Obviously, I want to be going for Bonnaroo, Clever, Tron, uh, ABC County, you know, all, any, anybody that's going to give me some decent amount of points, like I'm going to want to pay attention to. If you are a smaller power player, then you're going to say, okay, these are the players that I want to avoid, right? So depends on what side of the coin that you fall on or what you want to do based off this information. But going in the SVS, I mean, I don't write anything down. But I do make a mental note of probably at least three or four players that, okay, like I know where their hive is. I've got their cords bookmarked. Like I know what I'm doing. I know who I'm after, right? So that's their monarch power ranking. Let's check out their generals, right? So their their number one general is Joseph E. Johnson, which is defense. Um, ranged, ranged, range, defense, boss, boss boss defense range 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 defense ranged this is pretty common uh this is server 396 if i'm not mistaken so they're probably about a month uh, younger than we are we're about a month older um so based off where they're at um you know i want to take a look at their generals i want to see what's going on joseph e johnson 
All right, so he's got Akimene gear, Ares. He's got the Wonder One Dragon on there, 4.4 mil power. Siege Machine attack boost. He's got Siege Machine range bonus and mounted troop HP, which is unique. Refines are important. So he's got mounted Siege attack, 19s. Those are pretty decent. I don't know if I agree with his strategy on what he's putting on there. Maybe he got a high roll and he wanted to keep it. Siege Machine Defense, Mounted Troop, Ground, Mounted, Mounted, Ranged, all pretty good percentages, uh, higher percentages of, you know, a maximum of 25%. 17, Siege, Mounted, Range, Range. So he's he's got a, a mix of a lot of different things. It seems like he does have an emphasis on Siege Attack and Range Attack, which is pretty common for defense. So odds are, in his keep, he's probably got a lot of Ranged, and he's got some Siege. And if we look at his his attack general, which is, let's find Tron. He's got Alfred the Great at three mil. Let's see. Why is he not opening up? Okay, there we go. So range attack, siege. Range, ground. So he hasn't made his way around too much on Alfred yet on attacking. So odds are he's probably more of a defensive player. Like, hey, I want you to hit me. It could mean he's got a lot of layers. It could mean, you know, he's got Russia subsidies. And again, this is all speculation. I could be completely wrong, but it's, you know, these are just educated guesses, right? But I bet if I look at his keep, he's probably Russia. Um, just based off what I'm looking at here. Range attack, range troop bonus, and siege range bonus. All right. So nothing too impressive. He's, he has put some effort into his refines, um, which is, means that he's a, a pretty serious player. Like he takes pride in what he's doing. Um, I know that he's going to be definitely more on the defensive side. So more than likely, if I want to engage with him, I'm going to have to hit, uh, which is okay. Uh, let's take a look at Clever. He's got Simeon. Same thing. He's got four pieces of Akamenide, two of Ares. The reason why they do this is because you get the set bonuses, 15% if you've got two, and then you get 10% attack if you have two. So he's got both set bonuses, so he knows what he's doing. Range attack. Not bad. Range and siege defense. Again, a mix. So anytime I see a mix like that, siege and range, what that tells me is that if they attack, they're going to be sending Rage and Siege. I'm not a personal fan of if you've got a Rage General sending in a bunch of Siege. Um, in layers, yes, but um, it's just my personal play style. But he's got Range Attack, Range Troop Range Bonus, and Siege Machine Range Bonus. So yeah, so if he attacks, he's going to hit me with Range and Siege, which means that his keep probably has a lot of Range and Siege. Especially at these power levels too, guys. You know, when I'm looking at this, like say with, uh, you know, Simeon the Great, you know, two of them, Sam to see Bonnaroo, same thing. I mean, they, they've got some pretty decent gear on there. Based on their power levels, you know, 465 mil, there's not a lot, there's, there's not a lot of layering going on. So I know he's got a lot of range and siege. That's a given, right? He probably has... You know, if it's 465 mil power, probably 400 mil of that is actually troops, maybe 390. Now you got your construction power and, you know, things that add up, you know, your tech, your monot, your et cetera. Um, so a 465, he's probably got about 390 mil worth of troop power. Based off everybody just having bosses, he's probably got 100 mil in bosses, right? Because they're a, somewhat of a newer server. He's got some cavalry in there. So of the 390... You know, 100 of that's going to be probably cab, so that's going to drop it down to 290. He's probably got, you know, 150 mil um, in archers for his layers. You know, would it it'd be 11, 12, and 13? And then he's probably, he, he's got a, a little bit of ground in there. I'm going to, I'm going to guess. It's based off his, where his power is at and what he possibly could have. Um, so knowing what he, you know, my, when I look at this, you know, and I can scout to be certain, but more than likely I'm going to hit him with Scipio because, you know, based off his troop side, this is what is going to be the best matchup 
you know, what I have built and what he has going on. So let's see if we can find an example of somebody that has some bad refines. Let's go back to, so the, so far what we've seen, they're not, they're not great. They're not bad. Um, if there's, it, when it comes to any type of general that I can boost, like if it's gonna be my range general, if it's gonna be my ground general, then I'm gonna go all in on just that one troop type. So if I'm doing, you know, you know, Simeon or Alfred or Electra or Minamoto, I'm doing all range stats because the bulk of what I'm selling to them is gonna be ranged. Um, so I don't like the dual stats. I mean, if I roll a high one for now and I'm running low on refines, refinements, then fine. Um, but I'm not, too, I'm not a big fan of that. So let's go back to general rankings. So that's their top players. They're, they're decent. Um, I'm not going to say great, but I'm not going to say bad. Let's go down to like Morgath 3.3. Oh, no. We've got a Dragon Axe on a range general, which is not good. All dragon gear, really bad refines, lumber gathering speed. All right, so this is a good example. This player has not really put a lot of effort um, into his general. So that was Electra Morgath. Morgath's power is, 145 mil. That's an easy target. So if you're, you know, 100 mil or 200 mil or 300 mil, you know, that's a really good player to, to go after um, because you, he's not a serious coiner. He hasn't put a, he doesn't care too much about his stats. He probably has low buffs too. I don't know if we can find his wall general, but it's probably not very good. Let's see. Morgath, Electra. It's probably going to be really low. Let's see. Barbosa, nope. Where are you at? Oh boy. Okay, so we can't even find them. We're just gonna assume it's not really good. <laughs> so Morgath is a good person that I wanna go after. Let's check out Mr. Mans. Zzz. Let's see what he's got going on. Range, siege, rage, mounted, low percentages. Range, siege, march speed, ground troop load. Ground HP, not, not a lot of good refinements. It could just mean that he just recently you know, got this gear um, maybe his, you know, primary was boss rallies, but, oh, well, look at that. All four range 2020, 20, 19 and 23. You see something like that? It's good. But as an overall score, um, it's pretty, it's pretty scattered. Um, so he's kind of middle of the road, but let's see Mr. Man's power. Let's, I'm hoping he's got a little bit more power. 220 mil, definitely somebody I'm going to go after. Um, so this is the kind of things that, that I pay attention to. Really what I'm looking at is how much power do they have here? Also, what alliance are the top power players in? And this is more so for like if, you know, could the enemy potentially take your throne? Well, if you look at it, I'm pretty sure the top minus tune or ton, sorry, majority of the top 20 players, right, are all within two alliances for the most part, well, 18 out of 20, uh, GST and 300. So all these guys put together 465, 266, that's going to be, you know, 720, 890, 1.1 billion. So it would take, um, they're not going to come to our enemy throne. Now they had like a, like, you know, a 600, a 500, a 500, a four, a three, a three, a three, then I'm like, okay, so... You know, when I'm looking at that, I think about do I how nice and friendly do I want to be in SVS chat with them? If they're talking crap, do I want to talk crap back? If they're being nice, you know, be nice. Um, should I offer a throne truce uh, before SVS begins? That's kind of where I make these calculations at. Um, 
I did make a mistake early on where we we were on a like a four SVS win streak and we ran into some really big power players. They had like a 925 mil, a couple of 750s, uh, a couple of 500s, fours, threes. They were just they were loaded. Um, and I I was at, I think, 600 mil power. And I think second, third and fourth was like 300, 200 and 200. Um, it was pretty low. But I let my mouth talk a little bit more than what it should, and these guys took it personal, and they all they all joined the same alliance, and we were beating them, and they parked at our throne, and we could not get them out. Um, and I guess I rubbed them the wrong way so bad that the biggest player, he stayed up 30 hours that weekend during SVS, and he coined 100 mil power just to be able to, to win. And their will was just stronger than mine. Um, so it was probably the worst loss that we, I, that we faced so far. And the reason why it happened in most part was because there was a bunch of talk crapping going on or crap talking going on, um, you know, in SVS chat. So, you know, before you get in there and get to, uh, you know, talk too much and start, you know, causing conflict for fun, um, you know, just know your enemy. If they have the potential to take your throne, I recommend like Thursday, I'll usually do this. If it looks like, yeah, like maybe they could, I don't want the headache. I really don't want to be up for 18 hours trying to fight over this. And, you know, you don't really want to offer a throne truce on Saturday because whoever offers it's going to be coming from a position of weakness. But if you offer a throne truce like Thursday night before SVS begins, there's not going to be any type of ego involved, especially if you're playing nice and you're talking nice to them. If you extend a throne truce, you're more than likely going to get one versus you're down, you know, the, the that server's down 300 million points and now they have to take your throne to catch up. So just something to think about. Some of you guys may love throne war. If you do, drop a comment below. Uh, let me know what you think about um, throne wars and throne war truces. Do you like them or don't you? Maybe you like the fun. Maybe you don't like the headache. Let me know. Um, but, you know, that's it. That's all I got for you on the, the, the generals and keeping a lookout for the enemy. Just to recap, I like to take a look at the, the general rankings, how serious are their refines, a hive mind, so they have no idea what's going on, um, as you can see in the previous video. Um, I'm checking their alliance power, which let me take a quick look on that just to show you what I'm looking for. Alliance power ranking. So they have a 3.5, a 3.2, a 1.1. Yeah, I mean, we've got a 5.4 billion, um, a couple close to 2 billion. So I'm, I'm not too worried about this. Again, if you see like a 10 billion or 8 billion, then, you know, depending on how your server's matched up anyway, um, then, you know, you may have some problems. So just look at what you've got and then create the right strategy around that one on chat etiquette. How do you want to communicate with them? Um, and then also, do you want to offer a throne truce or not? And then Friday, you should know the top, you know, whatever your power is, you know, 50 mil, 100 mil, 200 mil, you know, based off looking off these generals, you know, what looks like the most favorable targets. And then you can, you know, arrest warrant them, you know, you can, you know, bookmark their cords, you know, you can just come up with a game plan, you know, to make sure that you can, you know, get the most points possible based off of who you're facing, instead of just randomly going over and maybe I find somebody, maybe somebody drops cords, you know, that's a part of it too. But, you know, if you can do a couple little things here or there to put yourself in a better position, then why not, right? Um, but yeah, so Monarch Power, General uh, Ranking, and then the Alliance Ranking, that's the main thing that I'm looking for. Again, if you join their server before uh, probably Monday, you'll see their previous scores. You'll see what they put up. You'll see what points that the enemy had, what their ratio is. I think if I somebody went over there, I think they, yeah, you know, their top five players were somewhere between like three hundred billion and eight and eight hundred, or not billion, but three hundred million and eight hundred million, at a, right around a fifty percent, um, you know, positive to negative ratio. So if they if they had 800 mil positive points, they gave away about 400. Um, so it's about a two to one ratio. That I'm not too worried about. That means for every 100 mil they took, they lost 50. 
you know, somebody's got, you know, a billion points and they gave away like a hundred million and they're nine to one, then all right, that person is a pretty, they, they either have amazing defenses or they're just really selective about they hit. So just little things that you can, you know, collect to put yourself in a better position to win.